So I'm going to write some notes. Um, these computers have Microsoft Word or Notepad, and if you'd like, you can write notes on our computer. You just have to remember to take your file with you, email it to yourself, or print it out, or put it on your flash drive. And it, all of these notes that I'm going to write, I'm going to put them into the network folder, and I'll remind you where the network folder is a little later. So just some brief recap from last month. Social media marketing is uh, known as also advertising. Um, advertising in the real world examples are radio, TV, billboards, uh, flyers, um, sign flippers, uh, those people that stand on the corner and flip the sign. Right? Uh, some of them have really good skills. They can really throw that sign up really high and catch it. So uh, this is a different form. Uh, these are different forms of marketing, of advertising. This is advertising in the real world. Advertising then in the digital world would be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. All those networks. So in the real world, uh, you would engage in advertising or marketing uh, to try to promote your business, your brand, your product, etc. You would use social networks the same way uh, as a means to market or promote or advertise your product. Both have uh, challenges, of course, and tips and techniques and do's and don'ts. But the big idea is that we we cover social media for a business in terms of for advertising and, and marketing. Uh, whereas a lot of other people use social media for personal, uh, sharing what they had for breakfast or chatting with friends and family, sharing funny cat pictures, um, and it's all valid. You can have social media for personal purposes or for business purposes. So, um, advertising in the real world, often not free. Advertising in the digital world, can start off as free. In the real world, that billboard isn't free. That radio time is not free. Those flyers that you put on people's windshields are not free. Um, word of mouth is free, uh, but you need a, sort of a critical mass. You need to get the ball rolling. You need to have at least that first customer uh, that can then help you spread your word. Um, so oftentimes in the real world, marketing, advertising is not free. Uh, in the digital world, it's free to create a Twitter account, it's free to create an Instagram account, it's free to use Facebook all day long to reach an audience. Um, to start off with all of these networks, they are free. You can start off free, then supercharge via paying. So in the digital world, you, you also have the ability to pay to reach more of an audience. In the real world, if I pay, let's say, $100, I don't know the rates at all, but let's say in the real world for $100, I can put um, a radio ad um, during, uh, during rush hour traffic. When a lot of people are driving, they're in their car listening to the radio perhaps, I pay $100, and uh, every Monday uh, my ad is going to play at, I don't know, 4 o'clock. So people on, the, on their commute could hear it. Well, uh, if I want more people to uh, listen to that, well, I, people don't commute just on Monday. They're commuting on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that means I'm going to pay $100 on each of those days. So I'm paying $500 a week to put my ad on, on the radio. Again, I don't know these ads. I'm just making up prices. But in the real world, I'm going to pay to reach an audience. And the more I pay, the more I reach. Same thing with social media. I can create an account for free, and I can start trying to build followers for free. 
And at a certain point, I might reach sort of like a, I might hit the wall, and I'm not getting enough followers, I'm not getting enough views, I'm not getting traffic, I'm not getting sales, whatever. So the networks have a way to pay to reach more of an audience. And you're going to pay real money to create these digital things, tweets or posts on Facebook or, or snaps. On Snapchat, you're going to pay uh, to reach more of an audience. And uh, just like in the real world, we believe, yeah, it costs money to put my ad on TV, and yeah, it costs money to print my flyers, and, and hopefully you're paying that person flipping the sign at least minimum wage. So it costs money to advertise in the real world, and we should know that it's going to cost money eventually uh, to uh, also advertise digitally. And we're going to cover those aspects. We, we touched on them last month with Facebook. We'll cover them again in, in future classes. But very concisely, this is the idea of social media, of why we would use social media uh, as a business. It's a way to market. It's a way to reach an audience. So today's idea will be Pinterest. Pinterest, uh, I think it's been around since around 2011 or 12. We can look that up later. Let's put 2012. So Pinterest has been around um, uh, since around 2012. Uh, and uh, stats show it's at about 200 million users, somewhere around there. We can look up the exact details. But this is a network that has built up, obviously, from zero users someone had an idea or a team of people had an idea to create a network uh, yet another network even though Twitter and Facebook had been around even though YouTube has been around had been around all of these other networks had been around but the team behind Pinterest decided we're gonna create a brand new network we're gonna have our own uniqueness about it and um, 200 million users later it seems to be working uh, because that's a lot of people that's a lot of potential customers Every yes. Um, rough, just roughly, how mm -hmm. many of that would be in the U.S.? Hmm, that's a good question. I I'd have to look that up. I I wouldn't be able to to tell you right off the bat. Uh, but it is a global audience, and um, most likely uh, on their website somewhere in the about section, they'll be able to tell us that. So we'll look it up. Um, in P Pinterest has a USP. And every network has a USP. Does anyone know perhaps what USP stands for? Not USB, that's what you plug into your computer. USP. Yes. Uh, unique selling proposition. Um, basically, what's unique about something? What does it, um, why does this thing stand out versus that thing? Uh, and this applies to a social network or a product. Our thermos is better than the competition because of this unique selling proposition. This is what makes us better than the rest. So every network, um, at least in the beginning, tries to have a USP, what's different about us compared to the competition. Uh, for example, just tangentially, uh, Twitter, USP, uh, 140 characters, which I know it's not 140 anymore, but this was the original one. So, just some examples. Um, we had uh, Google Plus integrated with all Google properties. Um, Snapchat, the youth love it, etc. I don't, I don't, I don't want to name all of these USPs at the moment because they change. Um, in the beginning, they start off at a certain way. Twitter no longer is limited to 100, 140 characters. Uh, now they've given us a novel length of 240, 280 characters. They've doubled it. So the uniqueness about Twitter was in a short amount of space, you can get your message across. Well, now they've changed it to 280. Google when it first came out, it was very integrated. It was very tied together with everything related to Google. You got a brand new Android phone, you came with a Google Plus. You got a Gmail account, it came with a Google Plus. 
you wanted to log into Google Maps, it came with a Google Plus. It was very integrated like that. Uh, and now it's a little less integrated because people felt it, that was too intrusive. Okay, so it's not as integrated. Uh, Snapchat. Well, um, the youth, however you define that, uh, they saw, well, you know, I had, a, uh, I had all my friends on, on Facebook and we had a great time there, but then now my mom's on Facebook. And my grandma's on Facebook. And my aunt is on Facebook, so I'm not on Facebook anymore. And they went off over to Snapchat, for example. Well, um, it was a place where younger people uh, had gone to get away from the non-younger people. Well, because any uh, of these companies, they're not altruistically giving you a platform to express yourself, let's be honest. They're giving you a platform for them to uh, advertise um, or sell ads and such like that. So Snapchat eventually uh, became a publicly traded corporation, which means you can buy stock in Snap, and the company Snap, you can buy stock, and therefore Snapchat has investors that they have to please. So they don't have to please their, their, their members. Uh, Pinterest, Facebook, none of these technically have to please their members, they have to please their investors. So Snapchat um, has started to make a lot of big changes, and now there's a lot of articles coming out that the youth doesn't love it as much anymore. Because now Snapchat is trying to uh, uh, appeal also now also to mom and dad and the aunt and everyone. Because now they've got investors to answer to. So whatever was unique oftentimes changes. And I see that a lot. I've been involved in social media and web design since 2001. And I see these things that here's a brand new network. Uh, here's something unique about it. And unfortunately, I see it over and over. They lose their uniqueness because of Facebook. The unique selling proposition of Facebook originally was college students only. Well, that hasn't been the case for years. But the very first versions of Facebook were, I think it started in Harvard, one of the Ivy Leagues, a few students uh, got together and they wanted to make a uh, social network where the Harvard people can communicate. And then they expanded it to all colleges. Then they expanded it also to high schools and then they expanded it to regular people. And then now students are on it, companies are on it, cities are on it, countries. You know, I don't doubt France has a Facebook page. I don't doubt, um, you know, San Diego has a Facebook page. So all of these unique propositions, they change. The, the unique proposition of, um, of Pinterest was uh, sharing photos of crafts. So people would show uh, off their, their craft work, uh, their their handmade items um, and that evolved so again the uniqueness of it um, all of these have a uniqueness started off with a uniqueness with ch which changes because of Facebook and the reason for that is because it got so big it became the 800 pound gorilla it became the two billion user network. It started off with only college students and it's now global. Everyone in the world has had some exposure to Facebook and it has two billion users. And whatever secret formula that they've figured out has worked. Their investors are pleased. Marketers, advertisers are pleased. And it's gone to two billion users. So therefore all the other networks are saying, what's Facebook doing? that works so well for them and how can we steal I mean borrow what they've done to improve our network so now Twitter has more characters Google isn't Google Plus isn't as intrusive as it was snapchat is trying to move away from their original core demographic because of Facebook and it's a very interesting time I've taught this cl this class for about five years or so and I have seen the evolutions of these networks and uh, just you know by looking at the news and just kind of paying attention to things the the what's the expression the the bloom is off the vine these social networks aren't the like the utopia that they were touted to be the the great communication tool 
uh, we see the news uh, more and more about uh, you know uh, foreign governments messing in elections or um, rampant misogyny or harassment and all of that and uh, hate speech and such and I uh, I don't want to be negative but you, know, you do see that happening more and more because of the anonymity of all of this um, mo for most of us we probably won't deal with that because we're not a big entity that we're a target uh, and so I'm gonna keep it positive in that all of these social networks can be a good tool for you uh, for business purposes to reach your audience to reach your audience that cares about your product or your writings or your art or whatever you want to use social media for um, so we'll be covering Pinterest and um, what is further unique about it and how to use it and tips and such about it and even if you were not here on the previous months where we covered uh, these three I mean the previous month if you were not here on the previous month when we covered these three what we will talk about Pinterest will be similar um, what we covered there and then eventually uh, in a few weeks we'll cover snapchat So this month I hope to cover, um, I plan to cover uh, Pinterest, and then uh, LinkedIn, and then Instagram, and then I have to check my notes for the fourth one. Okay, so uh, how many of you have ever created a Pinterest account? Raise your hand. A few people. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna create a Pinterest account, um, and as I recommend uh, from last month, um, I would recommend uh, to create maybe just like a testing account, an account that you you make it up. It doesn't have to be actually for your business. Um, it can be deleted later, uh, and um, just for the learning purposes of it. So, like all social networks. <coughs> Usually, you get a personal profile or a business page. So all of these networks can be used by people or entities like businesses, nonprofit organizations, etc. Um, when we talked about Facebook last time, we saw that how with my personal Facebook log in with my email address I log into my personal Facebook account and then I create a business page uh, again you can review that from last month by requesting the videos from last month Pinterest has that as well in that a person can create a uh, <clears throat> a personal uh, profile uh, or create a business page and there are those generic terms of profile and page which are so easy to confuse I, I will of course accidentally say personal page well page should be used for business and profile should be used for personal so I'll probably accidentally also say let's go to your business profile I meant business page the terms are so generic and there's a different kind of interface and there's a different kinds of settings and different kinds of features for each so each has their own features. Uh, business page often has more, uh, for example, uh, stats, more more statistics that show you what has been effective, how has your audience reacted, what was a popular pin, what was a popular thing that you shared. Uh, for personal, you, you get the basics about someone liked this, someone replied, but for business, you get much more detail, uh, much many more stats, because that helps you reach more of an audience. Each should be used according to their, to, to the TOS. Does anyone know what TOS might stand for terms of service 
each should be used according to the terms of service. Um, each um, each uh, network, when you create an account, there's a, often a little check mark that you have to agree to. No one reads it, but everyone agrees to it. Those are the terms of service. And they basically, on all of these networks, say something along the lines of, you will not uh, abuse the network. You will not use it contrary to our purpose. You will not reverse engineer our code. You will not use it for, and then it depends on network per network. You will not use it for hate speech. You will not use it for harassment, etc. All of these have their own terms of service. There's no one, no, there's no, there's no one universal terms of service. Each one has their own. And therefore, on some networks it might be okay to do multi-level marketing, and on others it might not. And on some it might be okay to, you know, post 20 times a day, and on others it's not. And on some you have different goals and different do's and don'ts. So each should be used according to their terms of service. Oftentimes the most basic thing is you will use a business page for a business and you will use a personal profile for a personal account. It's very easy to accidentally create a personal profile for your business, um, which is wrong. Most of these networks want you to create a business page for your business. And therefore, one of the ways that people get shut down easily is, well, I went in and I went to the personal login and I created a business here. No, we need to go through the business login, the business entrance to do this the right way. You are able to upgrade uh, from one to the other if you, if you did it wrong. On Facebook, for example, a lot of people think, well, I just go to Facebook.com, it asks you to log in, okay, I'm going to create my business. It asks for first name, last name. I don't know, I'll just put the name of my business on the first name. Well, you're, that, that's not right. Uh, they're asking for the first name and last name of a person, not a business. So to create a business page on Facebook is a different process, and to create a business page on Pinterest is a different process, which we'll see. Question? Yeah, so if I have um, a client who's a doctor, so she goes by her name, mm -hmm. um, and she's got some social media accounts, um, I, I don't know, I'd have to go and see if she set it up as a business page, but if it were set up as a personal page, is it going to be, what's the process or how difficult is it to change it to? It's not that difficult because this happens a lot. They have a process to upgrade from personal to business. So for someone that they, they are the face of their company uh, person, they still would need to create a business page. Um, and it's relatively easy to upgrade it to the right one. Is this, yes. Is this for any platform, or are we most pl most platforms on Facebook? Yes, there there is that. You need you need the business account for your business on Pinterest. It has that as well. Uh, Snapchat is starting to set that up. Uh, Twitter is one of the exceptions. When you create a Twitter account. It can be a personal or business account either way. It doesn't. There is no distinction of it yet. Google Plus. So some networks have that clear distinction, and when they when it does have it, I I, I point it out. And Pinterest is one that does have that distinction. So we're gonna make a note here: http colon slash slash business dot pinterest dot com regular old pinterest.com or www.pinterest.com is the personal portal is where you would go for uh, creating an account as a person or logging in as a personal account well they've got their own login their own portal for businesses business portal let's go ahead and look at this screen for a moment uh, go ahead and open up your web browser we've got all the popular ones down there Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Opera. Go ahead and open up your web browser and go to business.pinterest.com. We'll check out that screen for a moment.
business.pinterest.com Yes, you can view what's there, um, but you would want to um, use that login to manage your business page. So, but yeah, you can go to it with your personal one for the moment. So these things change all the time, and I haven't uh, looked at the latest version of it, but okay, here it is. So there's this. Um, video that's playing and it says reach people early inspire them to act and this looks to be like some sort of watch making company or like they have cool wristbands or something so here's a business that's trying to sell I'm gonna say high-end watches or something so it says reach people early inspire them to act join as a business um, Pinterest, one of the things that I see uniquely about it compared to the other networks is that it has a very active voice and you would use it in the terms of an active voice. What I mean by that is that it has a lot of verbs and it kind of spurs you to action more than the other networks. So Pinterest is more in the vein of an active voice. Yes. Is there a charge to join as a business? No. Uh, on all of these networks, there almost, oh, there almost is never a charge to join as a business. But later on, there might be a charge to fully exploit some of the best features, marketing and reaching more customers. Yeah. Terms are often verbs uh, spurring you to action. We see that right there in that ad right away in that video that it's what did it say again reach people and inspire them to act uh, so um, we'll see more of these terms but one thing I'll say early on about Pinterest think about using Pinterest more in terms of how of of what exactly people can do. So when we log in and, and use it more, we'll see the examples. But it's, it's more about, okay, I've got a product, and with my product, you'll be able to do this. You'll be able to accomplish that. Um, I have, um, let's say, I often talk about the fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Let's say I've got a bakery on Main Street. The ultimate goal of my bakery is to sell baked goods. So I need people to come into the, to the business to buy the baked goods. I don't sell them online. Uh, I'm in a real location, but I want to use social media to, for have people, to have people come to the, my front door and buy my cupcakes at the business. So I have the uphill battle of convincing people that are online to come to my physical location to buy my products. So I have to think about how I would use any of these networks, not just Pinterest, but using Pinterest in a more active way to convince people to actually do something, uh, to take an action. So that would be uh, creating uh, pins. Uh, pins, a pin is the term that you would use on Pinterest as your content. On Twitter, it's a tweet. On Pinterest, it's a pin. On Snapchat, it's a snap. Uh, on other networks, it's a post. It's content. You have to create content on all of these networks. Specifically on Pinterest, you're creating pins. You're pinning content. So with an active voice, uh, in terms of uh, concrete actions, uh, convincing people of something. So it's not just about... Uh, creating a pin showing a great photo of my uh, cupcake. So it's going to be more like creating a pin showing a great photo with a link to take action.
Yes. Is it just photos or can you do video as well? We can do video, but video doesn't seem to be that common on Pinterest. It, it seems to have evolved that people like just the picture, and maybe it may change. But I know throughout the years, we've had the ability to do pictures or video. Uh, it's just that it seems that it really the culture or the style of Pinterest is a picture. So it's uh, you could get more attention perhaps by going against the trend and trying to do a little bit more video than photo and that might help you stand out but um, photo seems to be the, the de facto way to share to post think about using Pinterest in this way creating a pin is showing a great photo with a link to take action um, uh, not just show something abstract but what they can do and we'll see how to do this of course I'm just talking generally at the moment um, that video that's playing in the background shows the process of someone looking at the merchandise they seem to like it and then it ends with a sale of course it's a very very rosy picture and it's a little bit too straightforward from viewing it to buying it uh, but uh, we have to be a little bit more active. We have to create content, as we'll see how, of course. We have to see uh, how to create content that spurs an action. Yes? So, can you use Pinterest for like business, or is it specified like what business you can It can be used for any, uh, any kind of business, yes. Let's see. Be where people plan their lives. Okay, there, there again, there's the term plan. Um, Pinterest is, is so much about, again, what you can do, what a person can do. A lot of the other networks, like let's say Instagram, I go on Instagram to look at fun photos, interesting photos, inspiring photos, cute photos. I go there to unwind maybe and look at something interesting. On Twitter, maybe I go there to catch up on the news and Facebook to catch up with friends and family. Pinterest, a lot of it is about this, about planning, about doing, about being active. Uh, people go on Pinterest to look at, uh, you know, to plan for a party, um, to, to look at what's interesting or hot. Um, we'll see how that works as we get into it. Um, so uh, Pinterest says they have open-minded audience, meaningful insights, and strong results. People use Pinterest early in their shopping process when they're open to new possibilities. Uh, so it's like a, they've kind of positioned themselves to be sort of like a store catalog. Question? Yeah, um, just because we had talked about the um, kind of brand, mm -hmm. it was originally it was for crafts. I've never really been one on Pinterest. I've been more, you know, anything on Instagram. So mm -hmm. can you talk just about what the current demographics are in general, how it's maybe shifted from the crafts? It seems to be um, still, it has evolved into uh, a, an audience that is seems to skew a little bit more female. So if I'm trying to find uh, that audience, this is a good starting point. Um, the actual exact concrete demographics, I usually don't focus a lot on mentioning that early on. Uh, because you will be able to find your audience uh, on most of these networks based on your efforts. So if I say, well, Google Plus is all about a technological audience, I'll, I'll go there because my product is technological, or um, I have a female-focused um, product, or go to Pinterest. That might be a good starting point. But still, with the other tactics we'll talk about, will try to find your audience on whatever network. So um, just just yet, I won't quite say what the demographic is, because uh, you will be able to find your audience. You know, there's 200 million users. We'll be able to find an audience. Uh, and I like to run the whole class in general in terms of let's get a little sample of everything. And then based on what we learn on each of the networks, I like this one better. I understand this one. Uh, this one seems more effective. So uh, we'll just kind of get a little overview of things first. Yeah. And I might be piggybacking on what she's asking, but I use it just for ideas 
personal, get, you know, party ideas or whatever. The business side, is it more of a call of action to buy something from them or how, what is the difference between personal interest account versus why are you doing business? Well, you, I think you've hit the nail on the head there that if you're a regular person, you're going there to get inspiration or plan things, etc. Well, someone is creating that content. It's either another person or a company. And so you may see stuff on, on Pinterest that then you might think, okay, uh, this is something interesting. I'm going to go buy it in a real store or I'm going to buy it right now directly from this pin. So depending on what it is you're looking for, what you find on these networks, on this network, for example, uh, you, can, you can acquire it directly. The, the fuller answer of how it works for a business is what we'll be talking about all day long. But um, we would use any network, like Pinterest, as a way to market our products, our services, our goods, whatever our, web, or whatever our business is about. We'll be seeing how to use Pinterest exactly, but we'll be trying to advertise and promote our product on Pinterest because other people are going to be browsing and looking and trying to get inspired or trying to buy something. And if our product shows up when, they, when they're looking for that, we have the possibility of our product or our company and such making a sale. Um, so the big difference is there, that we're using the Pinterest as a way, again, to market, to advertise our, our product, and we're trying to get the regular people to see it, to take an action, to like it, to reply, to buy, to follow, etc. There's some quick stats here, 200 million users. This seems to say 50% international, so 100 million uh, in the US, 200 million throughout the world. But notice this, 80% is on mobile. 80% uh, of their demographics of 200 million are on a mobile device. Uh, they've got a little screen here. Even if you've got the big, brand new, huge phones, you're, you're mobile compared to a monitor on a computer or a laptop. That's something to think about there. People are on the go. People are, are at a bus stop or driving or they're at a restaurant. They're mobile. They get on Pinterest and think about that in terms of uh, people are often viewing content on a small screen. So I'll mention this very briefly, then we'll come back to it. Think in terms of a small screen. <coughs> Eighty percent of people use Pinterest on mobile. So some things that we need to touch in more detail later are then create content, which are going to be usually photos. Create uh, content that is small. Quotes. We'll see what that means exactly, of course, but. This, this is a small screen compared to a big screen. So if you take a photo of a product that has so much detail on a big computer monitor, yeah, you'll be able to see the detail and such. But on a little device like this, uh, you have the ability to zoom in. But sometimes people, because they have short attention spans and things to do, they look at it quickly like that. They don't see the detail. They move on to what's next. So think about creating content that is small, meaning zoomed in or close-ups of your photos and such. Because if 80% of the audience is on mobile, we need to show them something on a small screen very easily. Then also create quick content. It's so funny to me when I when I see um, like uh, those handmade signs for people advertising their garage sales. And some of them get it, and some of them don't. Some of those signs, you know, there's, they're this big, right? And then they write in big letters, um, you know, this Sunday, uh, garage sale, 123 Main Street. OK, good. But then another one writes a whole essay on that paper. And because they're holding the paper in front of them, they think, I'm going to write a huge essay here. Turn left on Main Street, then go up the, the driveway uh, sale this Saturday. Don't forget to ask for Bill. Well, when that is on the wall, 10 feet away, 20 feet away, you're driving past it, you're not going to be able to read that at all. And no one's going to stop to read your ad uh, for your garage sale. 
Maybe if you got lucky and you put your garage sale ad on a stoplight where people stop, maybe people will see it, but probably not. I'm waiting for the light to turn red. So what I'm saying is, same thing here, quick content. Um, with these attention spans and these networks and things that I've got to do and I've got to run my business and pick up the kids and do all of these things, having a, a kind of content and pictures and all of that that's too much, too, too many words or too much to look at could get lost. Because if 80% of the traffic again is on a mobile device, people are probably looking at something quickly and on a small screen. And um, we have to think in terms about small content, quick content. Then create actionable content. Add a link, phone number. What, what is an action that they can take on, on that pin or that content? And again, whatever we, t we cover here, Pinterest applies to various degrees over on Twitter, Facebook, etc. A lot of traffic on Facebook is also on mobile. A lot of traffic on Twitter is on mobile. So whatever I'm saying here also applies back to those other networks. But you have an action. You've shown a great photo, but is there a link right there to click to buy? Not a link back to your website. A link directly to that product in your catalog to buy that product. I don't want to waste people's time that they click their link, my link, and they go to my home page, and then they have to figure out where's that product? Where's the shopping cart? Never mind, I'll go somewhere else. And they close it. So create actionable direct content. You can add a phone number and such. So they can click the button there, and then they're on mobile, so they click the button and the, it'll dial. Yes? Is the rule of thumb that two clicks or three clicks? Zero clicks. You want, if you're showing something on a social network, and you're, see, and you're showing them the product, and you're showing them the little text about it, you want to have the link that goes directly to your product. That's the first click, the zero with click. So having pers a person go to your home page, and then two clicks later, find your product, that's like the maximum, two clicks. Uh, because we have the ability to guide people directly. Um, the home page is a good calling card, but we're actually you know, trying to sell an individual product most of the time. So have the link directly to the product. Unless you need them to do different things on different pages, OK, then great. Two links deep in, or maybe three, that's fine. Uh, but you know that glib answer was, if you're trying to sell a particular product linked to that product. Right. Two clicks to buy. In other words, you see it. You click buy and confirm, and that's it. Okay, if you meant that about like the shopping process, yes, as minimal as possible, yes. Because um, you're still, uh, if they're a first time buyer, they're going to need to fill in their credit card information and their home address and all of that. So that's, that's a bit of a different answer. But once they've got an account, then it'll be even faster for them to check out. But the least amount of clicks to accomplish their goal, the better. So let's see what else. You can look at these other things on your own. Success stories. You can look at these on your own. But these are examples that I would, at some point, take a moment to read to see how these different companies use Pinterest. Lowe's, um, Warner Brothers, Carnival Cruise Line, they're all very separate businesses trying to do separate things. This is selling you a, a cruise ship vacation. This is helping uh, a business decorate, I guess. This is trying to sell tickets to movies. And this is you know, home improvement. All of them have different goals, but all of them are using Pinterest in different ways. Uh, again, you look at these on your own. I'm not going to do a long look at these. But I like how these are because they give. they say, what is the goal of this company? Uh, and here's their solution of how they use Pinterest to reach that goal, and here were results. Now, even if these are all completely fake and they made them up, they're still useful for you to read as a sort of like a playbook or ideas or inspiration of what you can do with your own business. So I'm going to make them in the notes here. Be sure to read a couple of these success stories 
for inspiration or goals of what you can do on Pinterest. And again, these concepts will also apply to the other ones. Be sure to read a few success stories to get advice, inspiration, tips. You'll be able to um, tailor some of the tactics to your own business, looking at what these others do. There were four examples there, and there was a button that says See More. You'll probably be able to find another company that is somewhat tangentially related to yours, uh, some other sort of I'm Victor's Bakery, I sell food products. Maybe there's an example of a restaurant. Well, I'm not a restaurant, but I sell food, but I would read that article. I would see how that restaurant is using Pinterest to try to reach their audience. Based on that inspiration and advice, I could try those examples on my own business. what's new they have these weekly webinars um, there are these video online videos uh, where they lecture on, on how to get the best out of their own network um, these are probably free but let me take a quick look join our new Pinterest business starting in March weekly webinars newsletter March 14th at 9.30, how Pinterest fuels millennial decisions. So if my audience is a millennial audience, that might be a good one to look into. Creative strategies. Uh, I don't see any prices. Most likely, most of these webinars are free, but it just seems to register and that's it. So uh, webinars. This is, again, a lot of this great stuff for businesses. A person doesn't need to know any of this really. A person is going to share a, a fun photo or talk to friends and family and they don't need to know this stuff. So this is why this business portal is so important. And you have different versions on the different networks. We didn't look at it uh, very much, but remember there's also Pinterest.Twitter.com or Business.Facebook.com. They've all got their own sort of business portal with their own advice and there are four ways to track how your tweets are performing. This is over on Twitter. Uh, me Twitter promote mode. So all of the networks have some sort of business portal that regular people don't really need. And it's usually business dot whatever. So you know, uh, load this up on your on your phone, open up a bottle of wine, uh, curl up by the fireplace on these cold San Diego nights, and then read some of these things and you know, get this advice and inspiration for how to use these business tools for your advantage. Let's see, webinars, their blog, what's new, tips, and then they're all about get a business account. And like we saw on Twitter, I mean on Facebook, Facebook had a little bit more of the euphemism of boost your post. And boosting was code for pay to reach more of an audience. Here they're not really using the euphemism. They're going directly. Create an ad. Ads are not free. So you will be able to create the account for free. You will be able to use it for free. But like when I talked about in Facebook, you often get better results when you pay the networks to reach an audience. And we saw in Facebook, you can start with as little as a dollar. Even in, in Pinterest and all of these networks, you can start with a very small budget. And you know, instead of buying uh, three lattes today, maybe just buy two, and then save up a little bit of that money to then use it for your marketing budget. Uh, and then you'll see that even a small amount of money that you're paying to reach an audience will reach more, more of an audience. So let's take a quick moment here. Um, you should see the button uh, down here where it says uh, get a business account or sign up at the top. Um, I would recommend, uh, we're going to take a break in a moment, but I would recommend let's create an account. And if you already have one, you can use it. But I would recommend uh, to create a brand new one, and this can be deleted later. You can make it up completely fake uh, and uh, 
learn these concepts that we're going to talk about and then apply them to your real business uh, eventually. So uh, click that sign up button. Make sure you're in the business portal, not on the main Pinterest.com because that'll create a personal account, a personal profile. We want a business page. So here in the business.pinterest.com, click sign up. Grow your business, email password, business name, what's your profession, what's your website, optional. Here's the terms and service that no one reads, but everyone agrees to. It doesn't even look like a link. These are links that you can click to read. And in there, it has all of these details. And I am not versed exactly on what all of this means, and it is a lot. But basically, people often ask, well, do I own my own photos? I heard that as soon as you put a photo on these networks, they can own it. I cannot quite answer that completely. Uh, I have to say most of the time with most of these online entities, the short answer is if you don't want your photo to be stolen or repurposed, don't put it online. And that's a very harsh thing, of course. We want to get online. We want to find an audience. But if I'm a photographer and I rely on my photos to make a living, I would not put my photos on the networks. <coughs> but how do I advertise my photo if I can't show my photo? Well, we would put a watermarked version. We would put a, a version that has uh, that has been uh, shrunk, that it's not as high quality. There's a longer answer than that. I have to uh, assume, though, most of the content I want to put on these networks, I want people to find. I want people to share. I want to go viral. I want to reach an audience. And even though I want that, I, I have the other side of the coin that many times these networks say, if you post anything on our networks, you give us the right to show your content for other purposes. Like this. This might have been someone's pin, and, to, and Pinterest is borrowing it to advertise their get a business account. Um, I might be fine with that. Other people might not. But the short answer with all of these networks is if you don't like what they are doing, don't use them. Same thing like, uh, I don't like that. Uh, that company uh, on the on that uh, TV station. Well, I won't put my ads on that TV station. Uh, you have that choice. So I'm going to make this up. Uh, Victor at apples.com and password. Um, make up some password. I'm going to make this all up fake. Uh, this will be Victor's Bakery. Options here. Let's see. Professional. So this is. This is if I'm a person, but I have a business that I'm running. Am I a public figure? Am I a magazine? Am I a brand, retailer, online market? So it's going to depend on, for most of us, it's probably going to be one of these brand, online marketplace, local business, retailer, one of those or other. There's no wrong answer here, but what, what these are trying to guide you toward are um, because there's so many users, they're, they're going to try to have your content reach the right audience, use the right audience. And if you pick the wrong one, you can change it later. For Victor's Bakery, I'm a business in San Diego, and I want people to come to my location. Well, it would probably make sense, local business. Uh, perhaps brand would also work. Maybe I have expanded to different locations I'm in San Diego and Seattle um, so the problem with local business is I can't I can't really set more than one location so brand might work fine uh, I'll just put brand We've got website optional uh, if you have a website I would put the website don't take it as optional and the website could be your your .com, or it could be a link to your eBay, or your Amazon, or wherever else. You can even put a link over to your Twitter, or your Facebook. Maybe you've got a lot of activity, and you've got a lot of stuff going on on Facebook. It's OK to put your Facebook on Pinterest. They're competing networks, but it's OK to put that. Let's say I have Victor's Bakery website. Create the account. Uh, 
Okay, so if I'm creating the account, I need to do a, a little bit of setup first in the beginning. Uh, the fancy term is the onboarding process. So I need to uh, set up a few things here, language and country. This can all be changed at any point, of course. Uh, but uh, my audience is going to be English speakers in the US. So we have all the languages, we have all the countries. You can only pick one of each, even though I'm trying to sell uh, in the US and I'm targeting English and Japanese speakers, I only have one at a time. Then I have two of three. Tell us what you're interested in. Pick five or more. Now, this makes more sense on first glance as a um, personal profile. I want to create an account on Pinterest to look at interesting things or to buy things or whatever. So as a person, I'm going to say I'm interested in art and food and hairstyles and such as a person because I want to see that stuff. Well, on the other side of the coin, if I'm a business, it doesn't make sense. Why do I care about this? I don't care about humor and my business or Disney or pranks. Like, oh, this doesn't make sense for my business. Well, we've mentioned this on the previous months, but I'll mention it again here. Um, it is useful for your business to also follow other accounts. We'll, we'll specify Pinterest here. Your business should follow other accounts and interests, which is what that screen currently is. Other accounts and interests for various reasons, which are inspiration. If you're going to be active on any of these networks, you have to be active on a regular basis. And we'll talk about what that means again a little later. So you want inspiration. You want to be able to create something new. So looking at the content of others in that niche could be helpful. Inspiration to create new content. Follow an account. Right, we'll say follow a niche for that. Uh, yes. The format for how you structure the tree of what you're going to say, like the difference between pins, sections, and boards. I found that by using sections, it kind of messed me up. It's more to have just a board and pins. But I was wondering if you could talk about that. Well, we'll talk about that as we go on and look at all the nuances of Pinterest. So following right here, I'm a, I'm a bakery. If I choose to follow these interests regarding food, let's see where's, where's some food stuff. I see food and drink, um, recipes, desserts, maybe Christmas gifts. So this is uh, pick five or more. Um, so I'm going to be selecting various uh, food-related, here's healthy snacks. So I'm going to select various um, food-related interests. My business is a food-related business, so I'm going to select various food-related interests for the purpose of inspiration so that I can figure out what more to create again this week, what other idea to share again, what other kinds of photos look like. Yes? So what are the business that you're putting together? None of these topics go with it. Well, um, it seems to be that you have to pick before you go forward, so, so you just pick. pick some that are close enough, and then um, we will then see on separate screens how to further use it properly. But they they want to do this um, as a requirement, even if it doesn't make sense for everyone. Now you're telling me that your business has no association with adorable kittens. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yes, they, they can be uh, tailored, further tailored later. So inspiration to create new content, um, to keep up to date with trends. Uh, so I'm a bakery. I'm trying to get customers to my bakery. Uh, I'm going to see what other bakeries are doing. And um, based on what they're doing, I get inspiration. I could do something like that. And uh, I have maybe competitors that are on, that are on Pinterest. I can see what they're up to, and I can also get inspiration from those in, in other locations, like other bakeries in, let's say, New York. Uh, we don't have direct competition there, but it's another sort of bakery. And then we will say here, um, this step um, shows you other Pinterest accounts. One day, your account will be in this list. So when other people create their account and it asks them, what do you like? Well, if you've created content that is related to you know, vintage content, um, uh, healthy snacks, as you create these kinds of contents, which I'll show you how, of course, but once you create these sorts of things, when someone in the future creates their account, your content could be visible here. Because after I select one of these general ideas and I, I click Done, uh, it's going to put together a um, it's going to put together a sort of a profile of those kinds of things for you to look at. Well, on the flip side, if my uh, company is creating those sorts of things with those various topics and such, I can get found. I get a pop-up about adding the Pinterest button. I'm going to skip that for the moment. That's about uh, when we pin something, when we share something a little later. I'm going to skip that for the moment. So based on these five things that I had selected, I'm going to see from this screen, the home screen, I'm going to see various pictures related all to that. And again, when someone else creates an account and they've chosen these various uh, items, my um, content could show up there. So we'll cover the various screens, we'll cover the various terminology, we'll cover uh, organization and all of that of course, but I, I, for the moment I just want to make sure everyone has some kind of account to work with if you would like to do it in class. If not, you could do this at home. Of course, you could review the video later, do it at home. But I want to take our first break, uh, and I want to make sure everyone's got something to work with. And it's 11, so we'll take a break until 11.10. And when we go on, we'll look at the various aspects of Pinterest and how to start using it and such.